All right, guys, we are headed down to Clutch Kickers, round two. Uh, pretty excited about this one. So we are taking the Miata. The plan was to have the vet done, the new build done by this, but this is a really good layout for the Miata. It's an infield layout. It's a little bit lower speed. It's a lot less power hungry than the bank. So there's a less differential between a high power car and a lower power car. Uh, not to mention, we still have the nitrous. So we have two full bottles in case we want to use it. Probably going to use it. Um, but basically this layout is just really well suited for the Miata. The bank layout is always tough because the gearing in the car is not right for a uh, banked layout. Uh, just whatever. The, the gearing is right for this layout. It's, it's a good good mix for the Miata. And with the nitrous, we can put all the grip in this thing probably. All the grip we ever want and it'll still have enough power to spin them. So I'm really excited for this. To be able to compete with the car hook it up on a, a little bit lower speed track where the gearing's right and having the nitrous. Again, I don't know that we'll use it, but the car should be a ripper at this round. So it's a fun one. It's really the, the Miata's last chance at a final hoorah. It's got one more chance after this, but hopefully it's a good round for us. Uh, I'm optimistic. We did a lot of work on the Miata, some small upgrades, getting it, things dialed, went through it. Uh, hopefully it's a good round. So we did have a little bit of a tire debacle. Uh, just the shipper, they ended up like sitting at the hub forever before they shipped, like before they left. But they went to the, sh the shipper, picked them up, but then they sat at the shipper's hub for days, which we didn't realize, and then got shipped. So they are getting here tonight slash tomorrow morning. So Ron from Nitto is literally going two, three hours from Tampa to Orlando to pick the tires up for me because we don't have enough tires otherwise. We could. We could make it to like maybe top eight and do almost no practice on the tires we have, but we need to do some practice. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's that. We'll uh, get there, get unloaded, start driving. It is pretty hot out. So it's definitely gonna be a, uh, gonna push the cars to the limit. So anyway, see you guys there.
this being Friday's practice, there wasn't the full field there, and we weren't planning on doing a ton of runs because we still weren't sure if we were going to get our tires or not. So my main thing was just to do a few runs, feel it out, make sure the car was good so we had some time to fix it. And the main thing I wanted to focus on was chasing. You know, I, I just... I think that's more important, if, at least for me, I might as well just do a bunch of chase runs and not worry so much about the lead. So my goal was just to chase anytime I could. If I had the option, I'm going to chase. If I have to lead, we'll lead. I did have a couple odd instances before that chase with Alberto. I had uh, this guy who I was playing a little safe with, um, and he spun on the inside clip. And, you know, in practice like this, people you're unsure of you give them enough space where you have that bailout room. So inevitably, I did have to do some leads, and what I was really working on with my leads was doing this big flick into this second outer zone without doing much handbrake, trying to be fluid and smooth and fast and committed. That's not normally how I drive. I normally drive in a very safe, conservative manner. So I was taking a very different approach to the weekend than I normally would for more reasons than one. But unfortunately, there was lightning. They shut the event down a little early for that night. All right, quick recap of the day. Overall, solid day. Really happy with how the car is feeling. All the little upgrades we made, not, almost none of them we had to do, but I'm really glad we stuck it out and got them done because you know, the chill out system is working better than ever and that's made a massive difference. I'm really glad we got those upgrades done. The new steering wheel, should have done that before last round, but it feels good. The car feels really good. Uh, there was no crazy run. I didn't do any crazy good chase and I didn't do a lead that I was like, that was it, but I really feel like we can get there. I feel like the car is capable of that. I've just got to get a little more dialed in. So uh, overall, solid day one, solid day one. I'm excited to see what tomorrow holds. Hopefully the rain holds out. We're not very prepared for the rain. Uh, but hey, we'll see what happens. Anything can happen. So uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. <sighs> More driving. We got practice, qualifying, and top 64 battle, assuming we qualify. So it's going to be a long day. So as I said, my whole goal here was to chase as much as possible, which can be a little bit tricky if other people are on that same mindset, but we start off by chasing Brandon Wicknick. He is a phenomenal driver. I love driving with Brandon. Uh, I was a little timid at the start of this chase just because first run of the day, but not only that, he was uh, learning this car. It was a borrowed car. He told me he was pretty uncomfortable in it at first, and he gave me the thumbs up before this run that he, you know he was getting there, he was getting confident in it. Unfortunately, his car got totaled by someone that was uh, working on it right before the event. Total bummer of a situation for Brandon, but he kept his head up. He was able to use this car and still make it out the competition. So we do our first chase, and again, we start out timid. So just giving a little room there. And these are things you can think of after the fact, you know, like how was that chase run? Well, you know, I intentionally left a little room there. And then when I decided to try to get in the pocket, you know, we were there or we weren't there. And you can kind of get an idea of where you're at, how you're feeling, so on and so forth. So this run felt pretty good for a start chase run of the day. I felt pretty happy with the transitions. The car is feeling solid and I'm feeling really comfortable in just how it's driving. So inevitably, as I said, we have to do some lead runs. It's just basically what I'm putting priority on, which is the chase runs. So we do our lead and uh, my goal here is to do that big flick. And this is the first one where we really got the concept to get flick into that front clip right on it, flick back, get on throttle and commit to this outer zone. I wasn't all the way in the outer zone. The run wasn't perfect, but I knew the bones of what I was trying to do was there, which is, that was what I was looking for. So I felt pretty good about this run. Now, this is tricky and risky to do it this way because the first outer zone here, you kind of have a bit of time to spot it, but if you really commit to it, you don't really know for sure if you're going off till you're there. But then this one, without the, the time to hang on the handbrake and get an idea of where you're at, 
you're basically using the grip of the tire to dig out. So you throw it in as if you're going to overshoot it and then drive out of it. So you don't really know if that's going to happen until you're already there and you're full throttle and it's either pulling out or it's not. So it's, so it's one of those things, it's risky, but it's definitely more fun and I'm always trying to have fun with comps. So we line up behind Brandon McDowell. He tells me to give him a little bit of space, uh, which usually is what people ask for towards the beginning of comp. They don't want you to try to throw it in on their door if they're not 100% confident in their line. So we honor that wish, which can be tough to do when your goal is to get good chase practice. And you know, you're gonna have to push it in comp. So if you don't push it in practice, you're not gonna be ready to push it in comp, at least in my opinion. Uh, but you know, I, I don't wanna do that to somebody. If they make a mistake and they ask me for room and then I smash into them, you know, that's on me. So we gave them a little bit of room, but still tried to stay in the ballpark, stay in the game, and the, the chases are feeling pretty good for what they are and, wh and where we're at in the weekend. So we line up for our last run before qualifying, and naturally, everyone wants to lead on the last run because their next run's gonna be qualifying, but I said no. I'm committing to my program. I said I wasn't going to worry about it. I said I was going to do all, just as many chases as I possibly could. That's what we're doing. But unfortunately, uh, Miles in front of me had an issue, straightened out. So we ended up doing kind of a half solo run for the second half of the track. I mean, better than nothing, I guess. Not the most ideal way to end practice, but, you know, we'll make it work. Now it's time to get ready and uh, go try to qualify. So driving back to the pits, I was getting a lot of thumbs up from everybody and claps and I was like, okay, I guess that was a pretty decent run. Well, it was. It got us in provisional first with a 91. All right, we got two people left, Dirk and Adam, both very capable of beating my score, but we're still sitting number one. I've never been number one qualifier at Clutch Kickers. I have at other events, but never Clutch Kickers. So, uh, man, come on. Was it recording? Was I not recording? All right, there's only one person left who can take away the number one. I've never number one qualified at Clutch Kickers. And it's Adam. Oh. oh, this is stressful. It was Dirk, but he messed up, but I wasn't recording it. Oh, I don't even know if I can. We did it! We did it! <laughs> First time! Woo! Connadell, <laughs> seventh, Taylor Hole, sixth, Nick Ward, fifth, Nate Hamilton, fourth, Adam LZ, third, Dan Burkett. Second, Chelsea Denofa, and first, Taylor Ray. Yeah. All right, 
end of day two, solid day. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, obviously, you know, managing to qualify first, really pumped on that for a lot of reasons. First time ever qualifying first at Clutch Kickers, and we had either the biggest or one of the biggest fields. We had almost 80 drivers show up and then, you know, whittled down to about 68 with broken cars and then ended up being 61 qualified. So we did manage to get a buy run, which I was stoked about. There's, I hate having to do the first battle after qualifying. It, it makes for such a long day. And once you get through that, that hurdle of qualifying, you feel like you should be done, you know, but then to switch gears and go, okay, now I got to do the first battle. And if I mess this up, then none of the qualifying mattered, you know, it's, it's stressful. So I was really, really happy to get a buy run because I, I, you know, the, the chill thing kept me cool today and I, I didn't feel like I got overheated, but I felt like I had crazy heat exhaustion. My head was killing me. I felt nauseous, but it ended up feeling better. We got a buy run. Uh, I'm pumped. The car's driving great. The, the unintentional change of the front tires, like, made the car, for me, way better to drive. You know, I didn't think it was even lacking, but after having that change, like, the car's on rails. It's feeling good. It's just crazy. I mean, this was the... I focused the least on qualifying that I ever have because last round I focused too much on it, didn't get any chase practice, and then when it came to chasing, my first chase run, full chase run was in comp, you know? And uh, it's just, it's kind of ironic that the time I focused on it the least and I worried about the line the least and just went out there and just had fun and did what felt fluid, it did the best. <laughs> it's crazy. So anyway, car's feeling good. We got tires, huge shout out to Nitto, Ron, made the sacrifice of going and getting them from the freight place that uh, was the cause of the delay. And yeah, should be fun tomorrow. I'm excited. Uh, so anyway, I'm the Quick Tripper Driver and I'll see you guys tomorrow. So practice on Sunday before competition is always the hardest time to get a chase run in because qualifying's over. People aren't worried about their lead line anymore. Obviously, they want to do a good lead. They need to do a good lead for the battle, but it's not so important. You know, it's not the difference between all these places and stuff. So everyone wants to chase. When I pulled up out onto grid, there was about 10 or 12 people in the chase line and only three people in the lead line. So I said, I guess we're leading first. I went ahead and went up, got in the lead line and did a lead. You know, it, it is still important to, to get your leads through. Like if you just went through all of practice and only did chases, even if you could, I think it wouldn't be the best idea, you know, because then you're, you're just not comfortable in your lead, especially if you're leading first, which since we qualified first, that means any and every battle we're going to lead first. Normally, we don't really know where, when it's, what it's going to be until we know who we're battling, if they qualified higher or lower, but in this case, we at least know we will be leading first every time. So I led Dirk on the first run, and then he was nice enough to give me a chase run for the second run, which he was someone I definitely wanted to chase. He's one of the... The quicker car is good smooth driver, someone you can kind of push with. So first chase of the day, not the most aggressive, you know. I'm yeah, I'm trying to be aggressive. I'm trying to, to do what I'm going to need to do in comp, but without taking huge risk. And that's kind of what practice is about, you know. Some people say, well, you can't win practice. And while that's true, right, you don't want to go out and total somebody's car in practice. You don't want to drive like it is the final battle because you're putting a lot of risk on the line. But you want to drive aggressive and you want to drive through any issue the lead driver might do because you're gonna have to do that in competition you know if that happens in comp and you haven't practiced it you haven't practiced anything like it and you're bailed out every time that's kind of going to be your instinct so for me i think it's important to drive pretty aggressive but obviously without taking any insane risk that could take you or the other driver out so we do end up lining up with who is going to be our first battle lucas torno so it's always nice if you if it works out to be able to chase whoever you're going to battle during practice because then you have an idea and and a general concept of how they drive you know how they initiate how quick their car is you know it's tough if you don't have your car kind of hooked up like you would for that particular person and then you chase them because then you don't know for sure but it helps so i ended up giving him a lead run as well and then i ended up giving uh ethan parnell a lead run who would be if he won his battle and i won my battle then me and him would end up battling we uh give him a lead run uh we me and him have driven together a lot uh we've battled a handful of times at least so i think he's got a pretty good idea of what i'm gonna do and how i drive and how quick my car is and all that stuff but that always does change from one track to another you know it's never the same even if you've driven with someone a ton of times that you know everyone kind of does every different track a little differently some people might be really smooth on one track and really kind of choppy on another track so it is still good to get that chase run in if at all possible so we follow as many people as we can same concept you know going against them potentially or not i mean this is all our side of the bracket so 
you know, you could inevitably meet one of these people at some point if you make it all the way, you know. Uh, but then there's everyone's kind of bailed out of line. It's a lot of practice time. It's an hour for only 16 people one side of the bracket. So I see Nate sitting there in the chase line. I'm like, all right, let's go. So I just rolled by him with the thumbs up. He was down to party. Let's go. So uh, I was excited for this. I like driving with Nate. Nate is a really cool guy. I used to watch videos of him back in the day when he was doing Pro-Am. He used to have this little video series and you know it, it's crazy to drive with these people who I've known for a long time even before I was doing competition drifting and yeah I don't know. It's always fun to drive with Nate. Super cool guy. Super humble, super chill, always having a great time. So he's actually in a borrowed car. His car is having an issue so he's running the Clutch Kickers vet which it was kind of interesting to get his take on driving a VET versus uh, his S chassis, but he seemed to be having fun in it. And the proper thing to do, even if you're not necessarily gonna battle the person, if you're tandeming at all, even at a fun event, if someone gives you a lead, you should give them a lead. You should at least try to offer to give them a lead. So he made sure to stop and give me a lead. He could have actually gone and chased again if he wanted to, but instead he waited for me so that he could give me the lead. And I mean, at this point, we're pretty much hot lapping. You know, there's really no one in grid. We're pulling right back up to the line. Luckily, my car's cooling system was handling it because if not, we would have had to stop a while ago. But we're just turning laps and, you know, the more practice you can do, the better in some senses. But doing a lot of practice can also kind of hinder you because you find all these little potential mistakes. So, oh, this time I went a little deep here. This time I did this or this time I did that. It kind of gives you more to overthink. So I really do think there is a fine line, but when the time comes down to it, I'm always going to try to get as much practice in as I can. I want to get as many laps as I can either way, whether it's beneficial or not. So we get to chase him too, and it was a lot of fun. It was a fun chase. It wasn't so I'm still haven't got that chase where I'm like, yeah, that that's what I need to do in comp. And we're out of our second set of tires. We're running out of time for the session. So I decided to pull off. I'm not bummed with the session by any means, but I definitely just, I, I didn't get any chase run that was really, really aggressive. But I look at the time and I realize we've got a few minutes left. I'm going to lead first. You know, we're going straight from this into battles. My next run's gonna be in the battle. Let me go knock out a lead real quick. There's only two people on track, got plenty of time. I'm gonna run out there and just do a quick lead. And I mean, when I tell you there's basically nobody on track, I drove straight on track, straight through where you would grid, straight through the burnout box, because once your tires are warm, why do you need to keep doing burnouts if you're driving within a couple minutes of your last lap? I don't understand that. Uh, and this ended up being a mistake. And I thought, I debated it. I debate. I said last run too, but the tires were pretty done. They were really just overheated from hot lapping. And it, it wasn't a good representation of what my next run was gonna be like with grippy tires. And this section here, this flick in that we've talked about, this you have to do with grip. You're relying on the grip to pull you out of it. So you, it, it's, you can't really do it without grippy tires. You can't really practice it without grippy tires on. So. That was a mistake. Now we've ended our practice with an off that would equate in a zero before our battle. Again, wasn't the ideal move. Should have, should have not done that. <laughs> and with all that practice and some waiting around, the time had finally come for our battle. No more practice, no more what ifs, no more testing and trying different lines or whatever. N none of that matters anymore. Now it's time to do it on the spot. And this is what's so hard about comp drifting. You've got to do it on the spot. It doesn't matter if you have all great practice runs. If this run right now doesn't work, you zero out, something happens. It, none of that, none of that matters. You could be driving amazing all weekend. So let's, uh, let's do this battle.
as some of you already know, I don't use a spotter in competitive drifting. A lot of people do, someone to tell them all these different things. I just don't like it. I prefer to just go by feel. But I did tell Raldo before this, just give me a one through five on how they did on their chase, just so I have a rough idea of if I need to go hard, play it super safe, or somewhere in the middle. So we decided to do that just to just to have that in the pocket and know about where we were at without too much information to potentially overthink. So now we're going into our chase. We've got a good idea of what we need to do here. Now, unfortunately, it got restarted twice. I, I think he was having some issues with his gearbox, so he ended up, it popped out of gear or something, but we get a good start and it's time to go. So as I was kind of chilling, watching the comp, I got word that they were going to skip the Talk 16 ceremonies due to weather, to try to beat the weather. They knew the rain was coming, they wanted to get this show on the road and not waste time with the ceremonies. Well, I wasn't ready, so I kind of rushed and got in the car, and we're going to be the pace setters of this event. Since we qualified first, that puts us in the top left of the bracket, which means for every section of comp, 32, 16, 8, so on and so forth, we would be the first battle, which I've never been before. I can normally judge when I need to get ready based on, you know, who else is going. So, you know, I was already kind of worried about it, and then we rushed out, and then we kind of ended up getting put on ice because there was a delay because of some protests and so on and so forth. So it's always a tough position to be in because you don't know how long it's going to be, so you don't want to sit there uncomfortable with your helmet on all strapped in, but you also don't want to miss getting ready and rush. But we got it all done, and it's time to go battle Ethan Parnell for the top 16.
on my chase run, I ended up giving him way too much room on the run-up. I mean, for the life of me, I can't tell you why I did it, because I've been watching Ethan the last two rounds, and he has been absolutely shredding in this new car. He's been driving super smooth, super consistent. I knew going into this battle I could put it on his door. I didn't get a chance to follow him in practice, but I knew I didn't have to worry about anything wonky happening in his lead and I gave him room. It was weird. He did do a little bit of a dirt drop there, which kind of caused him to bobble, but nothing too crazy. We finished the run. Decent chase overall, but we definitely could have been a good bit more aggressive, at least on the run up to the start of the initiation. We knew he was going to put down a smooth lead line, and I mean, here at Clutch Kickers, the competition is fierce, man. I mean, even in the top 32, you're going to get some hard battles, but, you know, from the top 16 on, you just, no matter who you are, you can't really expect an easy win, and uh, I knew Ethan wasn't going to be an easy win, and we were going to have to for sure work for it if we wanted to move on and into the top eight. So we did manage to take the win on that one, which means we are moving on to the top eight. This is always a good place to be because you're moving, you're grooving, the battles get closer. I'm excited. Let's do this. So we got put on ice yet again since we we're at the start of the bracket. It happened to start raining while they were waiting to send our battle. Uh, we were the next battle when it started raining. So they had us wait the rain out on grid. It stopped. Uh, it, it seemed dry enough. So they sent us out for a site lap just to see because, you know, you don't know what the track conditions are. And my biggest thing was I wanted to see how it felt on the entry here, which as I got into the outer zone, it felt a, a little looser than it had been. And I wanted to see how it felt flicking into here because if it's way looser there and I go flicking it in with a lot of speed, we're going off track. So I got that idea. I don't want to burn off all my tires doing this sight lap or get them super hot. You know, I need every ounce of tire I can get to battle and keep up with someone like Alec Conadale. He is a monster in that car. He's such a good driver. The car is fast. So we're leading first. Let's do it. Going into this chase run, I knew I had to give it my all, and luckily we were able to keep up with them on the run-up, get with them on the entry. The nitrous really helped in this situation, even though the car made enough power to do it without it. Now, he does dirt drop there pretty aggressively. I kind of dropped in the dirt behind him, came up on track after him. It tossed me for a little bit of a loop, but we managed to keep it together, get back roughly to his door through an early transition here to stay with him through the finish. and. 
Overall, not a bad chase. I was pretty happy with that, all things considered. The nitrous really helped, you know, even though it doesn't need it, it doesn't need that extra power to, to do the track. It just helps the car light off way quicker. So, you know, right when he gassed it going to the entry, I was able to just stab it. And when he came back on the concrete there, I was able to just get that power right back in the meat of the power and basically pick up the wheel speed early. Whereas normally it would take a second and linger before it really started zinging the wheels up. So overall, fun, exciting battle, as it always is with Alec Honadale. So Pat puts up the two ones, which means one more time. So that means we got to go at it again. Now we prepared for this. We knew there was a strong possibility that this could end up in a one more time, if anything. Again, I've never beat Alec. He is a tough contender. In my opinion, he's the probably the toughest car driver combo here to beat and uh we knew it wasn't going to be easy and now we got to go out and try to do it better and one more times are great because you're fresh and you just followed that person you just drove on a high level and you're ready to go and we were ready to go and the rain came down it didn't just drizzle this time the rain came down hard so they sent us back to the pits we sat around for a while and it rained for a while i mean it got pretty nasty out the track got pretty flooded. There was there was a lot of water. There wasn't much they could do about it until it stopped raining. So it did inevitably stop raining, and they dried it up as best they could. We got ready again. We went back out. We are both ready to get this one more time done. I, I'm raring and ready to go. You know, I wish we didn't get put on ice yet again. I wish we could have gone straight for it, but it's one of those things. So now the track's really wet. So they give us sight laps yet again, and this is... Total different scenario from earlier. The track is very wet, and this track is pretty hard to drive in the wet because the asphalt's a lot grippier than the concrete. The concrete is ice. So we go through our sight lap, and I mean, it is dancing. It is it's a very, very loose out there. And then as soon as you get back on the asphalt, you gotta get back in the throttle. And then when you get wide, it gets looser. And as we come onto this asphalt, you know, I feel it. I'm like, it's pretty loose. I do a transition, and there's just nothing there nothing there so i'm like well this is not gonna be easy but you know it is what it is man i'm ready to get this battle off and find a winner either way win or lose another one more time i don't care i just want to do it i want to battle
we started pulling back around, it started raining again. Mind you, we've been waiting for the track to dry. It hasn't been raining, and now it's raining. And I see Zach give the look of like, we're going to have to turn these guys around. And I started putting my thumb out the window. I'm like, no, thumbs up. Let's go. I'm down to go. I'm down to go. And he sees it, and he looks at us like puzzled that we're down to go. It's pouring rain. And he gives us the thumbs up. We both are down. Alex down. And we send it in the, into the pouring rain. And I realized, okay, they're actually letting us go. I, I got to find my wipers. <laughs> kind of panic, hit the wipers. And then we, uh, we took off. I'm sure the camera won't do it justice, but I mean, it was pouring rain. It went from not raining to pouring rain in the span of our battle. And uh, I think this was the coolest moment of the event for me. Just the fact that we were both down to send it into the pouring rain. Alec is a G. I, I should have known he'd be down, but when I saw that he was giving the thumbs up too, I was like, yes, we're going to do this. Neither of us care. We're down to get this done. I don't think a lot of people would risk potentially losing in the top eight because of just driving into the pouring rainstorm and do a battle. And I don't know. It was cool. We got the battle done. Uh, it was definitely a memorable event. So we're literally sitting there, water pouring into the cars, waiting on a decision. It's definitely the weirdest moment I've ever had in a drift competition. You're just like, what is happening right now? Are we? Did we really just do this? Are we really doing this? So Pat eventually motions us, just go back to your pits. Like, you know, instead of having us just sit there getting poured on. So we don't know who won. We don't know if it's a one more time yet, but we're just going to go back to our pits and assume they'll come find us when the rain lets up because it is coming down hot and heavy. And I mean, I couldn't see a thing driving back to my pits. The windshield was completely fogged up. The wiper's going full blast. I've got my head sticking out, trying to look, getting pelted with rain. Um, and it came down hard, and it came down for a long, long time, and it, it, it didn't stop. All right, well, we did get it one more time, but unfortunately, that is the end of the story. That is where the story ends. We were not able to finish the event. The rain came down, and it just didn't stop. I mean, it was an insane amount of rain. If it, Even if it had stopped, it would have been a stretch to finish the event, but it didn't stop. It was still raining when we left. I drove through whiteout rain for a solid hour, which I've never had that happen, even living in Florida for a very long time. So, you know, it was definitely the right call to call off the event, in my opinion. Um, they, so what they ended up doing is they split the pot amongst the seven people that were left in it which is, you know, I totally agreed with. That was kind of my thought was, I don't know why they don't just split the pot at this point if it looks like we're not gonna be able to get this off. Um, so they did that. Now the tricky thing was the points. So basically it went off qualifying. So since I managed to qualify first, I got first as far as the points are concerned. So I essentially won the event because, uh, you know, I did the best as far as we made it because I qualified first. So that's, I mean, that's cool. Like, I'm not gonna take it as a win. You know, I'm not that kind of guy. A win's a win. I, I don't feel a win's a win. I think it, it really matters how you earn it. So the, the cool thing about it is, you know, we, out of everyone that was left, where the people, you know, we, we got knocked out first round, first battle last round. So we, we were the lowest in points, you know? Like, it seemed like after first round, we were not gonna be in the game at all. For this season which i don't really worry about because it's like it doesn't change my perception you know i'm trying to win every round like that's my goal is to win that round you know it's not really oh well i want to win now more because of the championship it, it, it's irrelevant to me but it is cool to be back in the game back in the hunt you know i don't know where that puts us in the championship but it means we got a shot at the whole thing, which is cool. It's cool. So it kind of panned out, you know, the one round I focused the least and put the least emphasis on qualifying it. We, we qualified first and it mattered the most, you know, so definitely a crazy event. Um, shout out to the clutch kicker staff. I mean, they did the best job they could with the cars they were dealt. I mean, it's Florida and the rainstorms down there 
are next level. Man, I didn't realize it till this round. They are some next level rainstorms. So it, all in all, it was a fun time. Uh, two one more times with Alec. I would have loved to finish that battle out. I really wish we could have got it off before the rain hit, you know, while we were both fresh because I think that would have been the battle of the weekend. Both of us, you know, like just raring and ready to go. We just drove with each other, you know, five minutes ago and we know we've got to push harder. Uh, you know, I was ready to drive through his car <laughs> if I had to, you know. Uh, so that was going to be fun. And, you know, it, we got lucky in a lot of senses, I'll say. But I, I do think we had a really competitive package this weekend. You know, people say it's because the Miata's small and because this or that, but really what it boils down to is just this track, you know, we had enough power and our gearing was perfect. Whereas like the bank track, our gearing is terrible. It's not even close to ideal. This track, we had the perfect gearing, right? And then with adding the nitrous, having that little bit, that more low end, uh, being able to grip the car all the way up, um, it, it was really just that. That was really the biggest thing. The car was able to be competitive because of the layout and because of the power it needed and the gearing it needed and so on and so forth. So I do think we could have won the whole thing. I really do. Um, but, you know, I, I, we also could have lost. You know, that's the way you got to see it, right? Like, I'm not over here thinking that we would have won if this didn't happen. It's it's one of those things. So I'm happy with the outcome. It felt good. Uh, good round for the Miata. So, yeah, I'm sure this is a long video. It's a bit of a saga. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope to see you next time when we get back to work on this thing so we can uh, have a little more power and grip on tap. The Miata, we're pretty much maxed out all the time. I mean, the difference from the grip we run for practice and qualifying and full everything she's got is like 5 PSI of tire pressure. That's really all we've got in hand to play with. So that's where this car is going to come in. So I'm going to quit Jibber Jabber and I'm going to let you guys go. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Goodbye.